Okay. Hello, and welcome to the first time I'm attempting to do the game stream thing. And the clear choice, I'm usually doing music composition on this channel, but um, sometimes you gotta let the ideas kind of gestate, percolate. So um, tonight it's Skyrim time. I spent a lot of time, more time than I'm willing to admit, to get the, the the sound just right. Um, I had lots of trouble that I sh I'm not going to admit to, um, and just gonna yeah, getting this mic going and it's a different way I set up than doing the um, mix bus thing, the music stuff. So we're just gonna give this a try and just have some fun. Yeah, and if you read the backstory there of my character, Rain, um, yeah, it's a, yeah, I, I do kind of light RP, but I don't like, use his voice or anything, so. Um, and I just kind of have fun with it, and the things that I'm thinking when I'm playing this game Just the things that I'm thinking about, and I'm not really sure exactly why. Okay, things aren't things aren't looking exactly right here yet. So maybe I'll. Maybe this is better. No. Okay. Um, already, I'm having some problems, and the problem is both windows aren't showing properly. So I think I'm going to put you back in the backstory screen while I fix things. Sorry. what I wanted. Great. Yeah, it was a matter of, I had it set up for windowed mode before, but then um, I went, since the last time I tested it, I went into the NVIDIA um, experience and saw that everything wasn't, you know, Skyrim wasn't uh, running at optimum settings. So I clicked optimize and that just reset all my startup windowed mode settings. So anyway, here we go. Okay, you can't hear. Okay, this is all kind of new. So make sure that the levels are okay. All right. I think we're ready to go. If things don't sound right, just let me know. Chat. If they attacked Kolskaker. Let's just hope that doesn't happen. Okay. 
Right, so this is Rain. And he's angry. And he looks older than he should be in the story. He should be about 18. Um, and he's got... There we go. We need front light, not back light. Um, yeah, believe it or not, this guy is 18 years old. Um, actually, there's no aging in Skyrim in this version. And I don't have any mod. I don't have that aging mod. So um, just kind of put him at middle, you know, regular age. But his story starts at the age of 18, and he's lost his entire family. Um, and basically, it's because of this party of necromancers, and they did all sorts of bad things. And now he's devoted, now that, you know, he's, before that, his whole life was about supporting his family and through his work in blacksmithing. And now that his family is gone, he he has nothing left to support but himself and his need for vengeance. So he is very much against the whole necromancy thing. So he's vowed to, um, I guess, continue his blacksmithing, but uh, all in, in in how it would serve to make him a better fighter and more so. He wants to learn restoration magic so that he can uh, focus on the area of rest restoration that undoes, un that it's kind of anti-undead. Um, and so he can, he's imagining himself uh, fighting undead and especially those who create undead, which are called necromancers. They go find corpses and dig them up and do all sorts of terrible rituals and things and uh, they're, they're the ones that you always hear about raising undead armies to you know to fight for them and yeah there's a lot of interesting things in the whole fantasy world about um, what undead what uh, undeath is and what you know what the difference between zombies and ghosts and you know, the vampires, liches, what are liches and stuff. We can get into all that. I'm not a big expert. Um, I'm not a big lore guy, but I do like to come up with stories and um, play them out in my head in the context of this brilliant game, which is Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And it just celebrated its 19th anniversary this month. And... Um, so I, not, not 19th, I'm sorry, 9th, <laughs> it's not a 19 year old game, it's a 9 year old game. And I have modded it a bit, um, to make it look better, um, and play better. It's the special edition, so it looks very, very nice, so I didn't have to add too much to it visually. Um, for a 9 year old game, it looks pretty good, and I've added some gameplay things that I prefer. And here he is kind of um, exiting this city called Markarth, which is where he, he lived near. And uh, his, his father died in this mine over here. And now this mine is being overrun by another group that's trying to take over. And they're not undead. They're called the Forsworn. So up to this point, um, Rain has developed, he's been, basically he's just been a blacksmith all his life so far. Um, so he's 18, he's orphaned, his sister is gone, um, and he has this sort of vendetta of vengeance to act out. So he, he has a direction. Um, but there are some limitations that come with his character too, which I like. I don't want to just... You know, max everything out and you know I, I i build characters that have stories and you know likes and dislikes and fears and you know uh things that they really like and try to come up with these unique stories and kind of improvise um oh, oh my friend gino who's a great musician and i've known him for a lot of years he uh, recently, we were talking about 
music and stuff and, and I don't know how it came up but uh, he said uh, his idea is that games are basically um, choose your own adventure uh, stories that you improvise in real time um, which it, it's I think that's a great that's a great analogy for games uh, and that's really how I feel about it and we talked about improvising music and uh, I, I think the reason that I like these kinds of games and kind of doing my own first person role playing thing with this is kind of it's, it's basically just kind of improvising a story as it goes along and keeping in mind what happened before not just running in and bashing everything up and maxing everything out and that's no fun it gets boring after a while but when you have a, a real person here um, living this life and uh, it makes it much more interesting and it's creative too I, I, I really feel like playing games like this in this way um, feeds a certain creative desire that I have but this is why I kind of bounce back and forth between music composition and this kind of gaming So, without further ado, I should probably get into this. Apparently, I think there are some bad dudes in here. I should be on my my guard. He's not very good. He's not a very good fighter right now, but he's learning. Wait, no, this is not right. I'm completely wrong. I should probably just, okay, this is not the one where the Forsworn are. That's another place, but I think you can probably do some work while I talk to you about Rain's backstory. Um, and I don't think he needs, well, he should probably wear a helmet in the mine, because it's probably what led his father to his untimely demise. Um, gosh, where was I? Yeah. And uh, the whole mining thing in in the set of mods that I have for this game um, actually does increase your smithing skill. So if you want to spend time as a miner, that's a good way to build up your smithing overall level. If you're not familiar with how Skyrim does leveling, it's different from say Dungeons and Dragons where you put skill point you put points uh, at level time you, you you get this experience and these experience points translates into different skills and perks and levels and things but um, this game uh, in other RPGs it's kind of standard that you you play the game you get experience and then you, you reach a point where you level up and then at the level up moment you decide where what skills um, you increase based on the idea you have of your character um, but here in this which I think is this system is much better I think um, in this game you increase certain skills based on how much you practice them so, which makes a lot more sense. And it also discourages kind of just getting the easy skill points and uh, putting, putting those skill points into different skills or perks or however. But I like this. Um, if you want to be, it also has no class. There's, there's no set. You don't choose your class at the beginning. A lot of games make you decide, Are you is your character going to be a wizard or a thief or a rogue or a, um, a fighter? What is your path? I don't want to choose my path in the beginning. I like the path to, to kind of reveal itself through a story. And I don't, I, I think it's great. I like the, the idea bars. of having Move it, guy. Um, 
multi-classing has always a, been a weird thing in uh, the the D and D world, because um, then you have to think about, oh, I want to, if I want to do this kind of character, I have to get five levels of fighter and you know three levels of thief and one level of cleric just so I can get this one perk that clerics get at level four and and I think that that takes away a lot of the realism and immersion of, of role playing because you're thinking of then you're thinking of stats and rules and that's pretty meta as far as I'm concerned but with this if you want if you're imagining a character that knows magic but uses that magic for to you know, kind of increase their thieving ability, their ability to sneak around and um, like for for thieves, that kind of thing, you build up sneaking. But if you know some magic that helps you go invisible, for example, or muffles your sound, um, that's that's a different kind of character. Then you kind of go illusionist, thief kind of thing, and you can decide how much how much magic you want to learn and how much thieving how many thieving skills you want to learn so uh, it's it's very to me it's much more intu intuitive for building a character um and that's just the, the kind of thing i like to do it's like this character is a is kind of a blend between kind of fighter i guess blacksmith if you want to think of it that way it's aspect of the game that you can build up no matter who you are um, so you've got these abilities to craft armor and weapons and improve them and <clears throat> but you can but he so he'll have a good strong sword arm and he'll be good with armor he'll have certain perks that make him better at wearing armor than uh, you know other characters but he'll also be a he'll also know a lot about restoration magic and restoration magic is a school of magic in Skyrim in which um, which you would think of as kind of in the classic sense you think of as a cleric and but he's not really a religious guy and he he worships the the proper he wor worships RK which is a god in that in their pantheon but um, he's he's not what you would imagine a cleric to be um, he's not a kind of you know, preachy kind of uh, worship pray and um get your skills through your god but they they do but he's not really focused that way he's not he's not the he's not a an archetypal kind of cleric character he's not a battle cleric and he's not a healer definitely not a healer he's interested in the kind of magic that cleric that the cleric class kind of understands about the undead about undoing the undead the whole the, the turning the undead aspect of being a cleric but um so that's kind of what he's going for so in the restoration tree and this is a mod this is the um oh i forgot what it's called ordinance i think or ordinator ordinator mod it's a, it's a great set of mods uh, and it really expands out these skill trees, and there are a lot more really interesting, well thought out perks involved. Um, this is not the vanilla perk tree, right? Um, but you can see that some some uh, branches of this perk tree uh, deal with being a healer, and some of them deal you know, other branches deal with being kind of a, a battle battle mage and others focus is particularly this one is it this one maybe it's over here okay maybe it's this one yeah this looks like the one focusing on kind of anti-undead stuff you meet um it, it says right here uh, your attacks and restoration spells and effects are 20% more powerful against undead enemies. So this is kind of picking a fight with the undead. And you continue up this tree for higher points and um, you earn special spells or uh, powers that are associated with kind of 
making life, <laughs> making undeath really awful for them. So that's kind of his thing. He's singularly focused on, on um, just rooting out necromancy in any way he can find, especially if he could possibly find the culprits that, that did his family in. Uh, that would be great. I know that's not, it's, it's not a built-in part of the story uh, in Skyrim. It's not part of the main quest or anything. And, but the great thing about Skyrim is that there's a lot of room for you to build your own stories into this world. So, I'm yakking a lot. But let's, so I'm going to shut up and... and do some questing. But what do I want to do? I thought there was... Okay, the problem with Markarth is that the Forsworn are pestering them, kind of terrorizing them, trying to take it back. And it's... It's kind of late. I don't need my helmet right now. Sorry. So I don't know how many people watching this video or will watch my stream actually know much about Skyrim. So I'm going to kind of try to balance it out. I know a lot of people are going to find the, the Skyrim talk kind of yesterday's news, but. Okay, so what, what would Rain do at this point? Well, he's probably really raring to learn something about the Restoration School. And apparently all citizens of this world learn two spells to start with. Everybody knows kind of how to do this. Flames in the Destruction which is just shoot flames, which he's not really into. He'd rather use a sword or a mace or something. And healing. So if we want to favorite that one, put it in my left hand, I could be fighting along like this, and if I get hit, I can do that. And that heals me up. And every time I do that, I gain a little bit of experience in that skill tree. And those points come up right there. And I'm at 15, just like all these basic ones. I don't know anything about. I can start putting perks into these. I I've already saved up three um, skill points because I'm level six already. And I have a mod that gains perk points at 50% 50 uh, 50 faster. So that's a little bit, it's kind of cheaty, but it's kind of where I like to play. I like to think my character is very um, fast learner and applies the knowledge that they get while playing, or while living, more efficiently than most. So that's my justification of using the 50% faster perk attainment mod oh, and sometimes heavy armor just from wearing heavy armor you get skill boosts what was it? oh this is the thalmor you're interfering with official thalmor business okay right not here to mess you up. I don't think Rain would know much about the Thalmor yet. Maybe just heard of them. I'm not sure what he would think about them yet. So where is he going? Maybe he's going to find, see if he can find some training. And he did hear about somebody named Colette at the College of Winterhold. And that's the kind of it's the Hogwarts, if you want to think of it that way, of this game. 
Um, that's where you go if you want to learn magic and you're serious about it. So maybe he would make a beeline for that because he'd heard of this this woman, Colette, who teaches restoration skill. But he also heard, <laughs> this is a, a lot of kind of meta knowledge is going to seep through, seep through whether I think it's right or wrong. All the way over here in White Run, there is another healing teacher who's going to be able to teach him a lot. And her name escapes me right now, but she has something to do with a tree. And let's see, White Run is a lot closer than Winterhold, which is where the College of Winterhold is, which is the Hogwarts. Um, maybe he'll stop by White Run and see what he can learn. Oh, that's, that's a long way. Did he go? What's that Reachwater Rock? Maybe there's a maybe there's a quest there. Well, I don't see anything. Let's go. So I guess we're just going to go. We'll stop by White Run first because it's far. It's it's uh, on the way. And I do not do. I don't do fast travel. That doesn't make sense to me. There are plenty of ways to get from here to there. And I have a mod <laughs> that increases there are more carriages around the world, around the country. So I can get from one town or, or city to another by paying, paying for the ride in a carriage. But there are no carriages around here, so I'll just walk. See what happens along the way. Walk always in the light, or we will drag you to it. Oh? Vigilant of Stendar, it says. You speak to a Vigilant of Stendar. Cavort with any Daedra, and we will hunt you down. I think the sound in the game is a little lower than I'd like it, so I'm going to push that up a bit. Just so you can hear their dialogue better. Okay. You're a Vigilant of Stendar? Yes. Our order was founded after the Oblivion Crisis. We dedicate our lives to facing the threat of Daedra wherever they appear. We're quartered in the Hall of the Vigilant. Keeper Carset heads Skyrim's branch of our order there, providing healing and justice as needed. Healing and justice? That sounds like something I'd be into. But who's Stendar? He is the god of mercy, the patron of order and justice for all of Tamriel. I'm listening. We bring his compassion where none can be found by cleansing all those who would offend his children. I think they're speaking my language here at this point. You hunt Daedra? And any other abominations that prey on mortals? Vampires, werewolves, witches? Ooh. But Daedra are the worst. Their callous disregard for our lives is abhorrent in the eyes of the God of Mercy. Hmm. Stendar, huh? Okay. None escape the vigil. All come into the light. Hmm. You might want to join you guys someday. The suffering the Daedra cause will not go unpunished. Hmm. Righteous, righteous vengeance. Righteous rage. That's really what he's about right now, so I think they'd be singing his song. So he's going to remember that.
normally I can't stand the vigilance of Stendar, but this guy would like he would like the cut of their jib. I've been hunting and fishing in these parts for years. Hmm. This. The Shrine of Dibella. Hmm. Okay. Sure what that does. Ah, blessing of develop increases my speech skill. So yeah. That means oh okay. I'm not gonna steal this stuff. Rain's not evil. He's just angry. When I say when I'm saying rain, I mean R A N E. It's the name of my character. I don't mean it's raining or anything. But referring to precipitation. It's late. Um, I don't get tired. I wonder if I could. I don't want wolves everywhere. Wolf. Oh, another one. Just clearing the road. to chat um i'm not uh you uh, you're more than welcome to hop in and chat something to me if you want i'm not a veteran twitch streamer so if i don't handle the chat in the way that you're used to don't judge me too harshly just I just don't know the ways of the Twitch yet. But if you want to pop in and say hi, I can see. I have my... I can see the chat right in front of me. slaughter goats but I will slaughter wolves who slaughter goats it's just my brand of justice it's late I wonder if I have any wood firewood firewood I don't do I have I don't even know if I have Okay, I do have an axe, so I think I'm going to set up shelter for tonight, and I should probably, what time is it? If I look up into the sky, apparently it starts something. Frost fire. Fro frost fall? Frost oh, there we go. Start frost fall. I like that way. Lost in thought, you reflect back on how much the wilds have taught you about yourself over the last several days. You recall a book you once lost that was full of wisdom about survival in the open country. On a whim, you open your pack and find the Survivor's Guide to Skyrim staring back up at you. Had it always been there? Or had, had thought alone summoned it? Or had thought alone summoned it? Oh, had thought alone summoned it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can read. 
You push aside the thought as you thumb through its pages and then carefully place it back, knowing that some things are never truly lost. Okay, so now what that basically means in game. What are you doing? What did that dude just do? Are you running laps or something? That was weird. Okay. I'm gonna go find a tree. Oh, a tree. And cut some wood so I can build a fire. Okay. That's the sound of Frostfall starting. And now I will suddenly feel the cold and the heat. Which is cool. I, I really like Frostfall. The idea that it's it's freezing in Skyrim in most places, and if you're not properly dressed, you could die. So I like that. I like that idea. Kind of like playing D and D with yourself. Okay. Okay. It tells you. Exposure. I can get more wood out of here. See, already I feel chilly, it says. How much wood do I have now? Dead wood. Nine. Oh, I think it might be enough. Do I have any pelts or anything? I've got leather. I've got goat hides. Okay, so let's make let's make a fire. Right here by the road. Quick or realistic? Realistic. Realistic. Put it right there. I don't have a tent yet. I haven't built one yet. See this guy, Rain, is kind of kind of a villager. He's, he never really had to learn. He, he, there was no Boy Scouts in his town. So he's going to have to learn how to do this stuff himself. So you need tinder, kindling, and fuel. So let's make some kindling out of this dead wood. I think that's enough. Oh, okay. Add kindling to the mess. All right. And I have picked up these little plants that burn well. It's called tun tundra cotton. You can pick up little things along the in the world and put them in your pack. They might come in handy like this. Little plants make great tinder. So I'm going to strike stones together, like in the Boy Scouts. Start a fire, maybe. You can't do this in the, in the vanilla game. You need a mod for this. This is um, called Frost. Frost Fall. Uh, or campfire. No, it's called campfire. It's a different mod. And I, once I got it, I could never go back. I could never go back to the old way. Can you imagine just like running around with hardly any clothing on up in the mountaintop with wind and snow, snowstorms, and it's, it's, game doesn't matter. Game doesn't mind. Let's you survive. No, 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 no. I want there to be a threat. I want it to be dangerous to be out in the cold. So we're just kind of chopping up wood into smaller bits to make into a bigger fire. Crackling fire. Six hours. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, crackling fire. That's good. That's all I've got for. Can I make... Can I throw some... 
goat legs on this fire. Yeah, sure. Put it on a stick, put it over the fire. You got some leg of goat roast. Great. And that's all you can do at a, just a campfire. If you're at a, if you have a cooking pot and some water and stuff, there's a lot of other things that you can make with your ingredients. I don't have them right now. So there we go. There's my little campfire. And it will keep me warm while I sleep through the night. But the problem is, what do I sleep on? I'm not sleeping on the cold ground. And we're not in a particularly cold area yet. So we're okay now. I don't I don't need to have a fur coat or anything. But I do need something to sleep on. So I can create stuff out of what I have. to make fur coats yet, cloaks, but I can make a rough bedding out of fur, so, but I need a fur plate. That's in this menu. Wolf pelt. I have 11 wolf pelts? Man, I did kill a lot of wolves before, didn't I? Make a few. And here we go, rough bedding. So that should be enough for me to sleep on. Rough bedding, just put it next to the fire here. Put it somewhere that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna line it up. Oh, how about over here? Ah, okay, that looks pretty. That looks all right. Let's put it right there. There, see? It's a little hay, a little stake in the ground. And that's my bedding for the night. Next to this road. How much time do I have? Okay, five and a half hours. So, we'll sleep for five hours. I will definitely be... Yeah, that's good. About midnight. <clears throat> okay, you can see up here, a little hungry, a little thirsty, it's okay my fire's about to die, but that's okay, because um, I've slept through the night, so I'll eat apple cabbage stew, and maybe a carrot, and an apple, that's good, good, well-balanced meal, and I'll drink a little water. All right, I'm well hydrated, I'm well fed, and I'm well rested. Okay, so that was fun. So I can see that it's 5.04 a.m. now and the sun will be coming up soon. I'm ready to move on. Let's, let's just, uh, we check on how I'm doing status well state well sated well hydrated and well rested that's well 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 so if I say well 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 that means we're ready to go so we'll pack up our bedroll here and put out the fire if you put out the fire early enough you can kind of store the unburned logs, but there won't be any left. Yeah, no unspent fuel to reclaim. So that's I like I like that those details about the game. So there we go. I'm ready to go again. Back off. Back off to White Run. So you can see we've come this far. Here's Markarth. And there's Whiterun. We're more than halfway there. This should be pretty easy going. Let's check the sign. Yep, Whiterun. Going the right direction. I also set that green marker you can see at the top. 
next to the E. Heading east almost exactly. On the way to Whiterun. What is this? This looks like somebody was traveling. There's one of them. It's a Khajiit. You see that? Their tail. See, I'm speaking to, to you guys as if you've never seen Skyrim before. I hope that's okay. I really don't know. But this guy is no longer among the living. He's got a book. Let's have a look at... Okay. He had a little gold. Uh, he's not going to need it anymore, and I don't see anyone around, so... What was this book? Dance in Fire? Oh. Okay, apparently there's something in, in this book that teaches me about speech. So I got a little bonus in the speech craft area. So I like to read these books. Uh, we don't have to do it now. It's not really the most opportune time for him to be reading, but the next time we have a moment, um, I like to go into these books that I've grabbed and actually read them. As you can see, there's, you know, they're not as long as books, but there's some cool stories in, in this game within story, stories within stories. So I like to read the books, and because we're um, we're streaming, I think I'll actually read them. I saw somebody doing this. Um, this is a streamer, this young guy. His name is Gordon, also, and he's got this stream, and he sometimes plays Skyrim. He's into Fallout seventy six now. His name is Gordon's BBQ. If you look up. Gordon's BBQ, as in barbecue, BBQ. Um, he's he's really fun to watch. He's much more interesting than me to watch. Um, but he was doing Skyrim, and he was reading aloud every book <laughs> that I saw him find, and it was surprisingly interesting to hear him read these books um, and his reactions to them. Um, I, I just love the stories in this game. Uh, it, they often teach you about the world, and and sometimes the books are hilarious. And sometimes there's just darn good stories. This is a bear trap, so it, I smell a trap. There's a ransacked cart with stuff strewn about. But then there's the, there are these, oh, and there's a horse over there. Yeah, it's a dead horse. Probably was carrying this carriage. But it's these traps that bother me. It makes me think that somebody ambushed this dude, obviously killed him, and then set these traps to catch someone like me. So I feel like I'm in the middle of an ambush. Probably the Force Horn. Maybe they're around here waiting. Oh, but you know what is here? Iron. Yeah, rain cannot resist chopping up some iron to use later in his smithing. See, we're almost at an hour now. We're at 55 and a half minutes. And I'm having a blast. I've spent thousands of hours playing Skyrim in the last nine years. And I love, I have loved every moment. And what you're hearing is kind of just me thinking aloud, but still aware that there's there may be an audience. But I try it. 
And I'm much more chatty in this than I am with the music composition streams. Because I just mostly keep my mouth shut and just compose. But there's a time for composing and a time for letting those ideas sort of sit in my subconscious and gestate. That time is now. But there's water here. I have an empty water skin, so I'm going to fill up water skin stream. Have a drink. See? You can do stuff like that in this game. It's great. Always on the lookout for veins of ore that I can mine. Oh, look at that. That is a herd of mammoths. Well, hardly a herd, it's two. Led by their keeper, that man in the distance is a giant. You don't want to mess with them because they will see that if you can see that club he's carrying if he doesn't like you one swing that club will send you sky high and you will not survive fall in fact you'll probably be dead before you start to come down so you don't want to mess with these guys at a low level they will pulverize you. But it is most hilarious to watch someone get pulverized. And they're moving my direction, so I'm gonna try to back away. They they don't get too, they don't come at you aggressively until you come within a certain distance and then they'll decide that you're threatening their their mammoths and then they'll, they'll go, they'll go angry on you and waste you. And they can move surprisingly fast with those long legs. Just run up to you and you're gone. But they're fun. They're fun. Okay. There's a deer there. A deer here. Ah, uh, oh, that's what they're running from. There's a wolf. So I'm going to do I don't think he sees me yet. He scared away those deer. They're obviously hunting them. Oh. bit warmer with my helmet on. Oh, he sees me. Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay, that didn't need my shield that time. Alright, how are we doing? Mm-hmm. Sun's coming up. In the east. You should see a pretty cool sunrise. Very soon. and stuff. Uh, 
I'm fine. You... I think I'm getting cold. Okay, I'm going to activate something here. If I want to see how I feel. Like what, what the weather is. Because I, I see things are getting... Okay, I'm very cold. I should probably build... Okay, I haven't saved in a while. Okay. Before the weather freezes me, I should probably... fashion myself a... Uh, clothing, some uh, cloak that's going to protect me, so that'll be a fur cloak. Create item. Okay, I can't, I can't make... Oh, yes, I totally can. I need hide laces. Okay, I can make hide lace out of fur plate. But, let's see, what do I need? I need two, one more fur plate. Yeah, so I'm just basically ripping up these hides that I have and making them into clothing or cloaks that I can put over. So I'll fur cloak and I'll make a hide cloak. Let's see, linen cloaks are good. They look cool and that's for when you don't really need protection but just sort of, it looks better than the, the back of armor. What do I need? I need two linen wraps, which I don't have. Kindling. Okay, I have a, I have a torch. I can make kindling and linen wrap, but I'm gonna wait on that because I think I could find linen elsewhere. So what I do have now, I've made this. Basically, just ripped up a hide and cleaned it off the best I can with my hands and didn't need any special tools and I've made fur cloak which I can put on just like that and it gives me a bit of warmth if I want to warm up even more I can carry this torch that helps warm me up a bit but I'm still pretty cold the weather thing. Weather sense. I'm using all the old... Okay, it says I'm getting warmer because the sun's coming up. Okay, because of the sun. And this cloak that I put on. So that's good. That looks like a hostile fort taken over by something. Mages? I don't know. Uh, too far away. But they're fortified, so I don't want to mess with them by myself. And we're getting close to that. See that structure? Okay, there's this structure in the center. Then, but the one in the distance there is White Run. It just looks like one building, but it's at the top of a big hill. It's kind of like, I always think of Whiterun as kind of like Rohan from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but this is a, this is a more stable community than Rohan was. Okay, so I went from cold uh, from very cold to just cold which is good and my first clue was the the images around the, the picture gets kind of blurry when you get cold and that will happen even before the message comes up and says you are very cold so that's a that's a good early warning. Your, your your vision starts to blur a little bit when you're stressed out or distressed by the elements. Hey, and I can see that 
the Khajiit traders, the merchants, the traveling merchants are there. So I might be able to sell some stuff. I don't think I have much, but... Here we are in Whiterun. I've been here before on my travels. All right, let's see. Let's see what you guys have to sell. Hello, Rizad? Need something? Do you have anything I might Hello. buy? Let me see if I can sell something. Greetings, viewers. Um, if you want to chat, post something in the chat, go right ahead. I will not bite. But if you don't, cool. I get it. No problem. I don't need it. <laughs> but. My first time uh, streaming a game. I usually stream music composition, but I thought I'd try this just because I like to game. Why not? I haven't read these books yet, so I'm not going to sell them. What could I sell? Flawless Garnet. You know, I'm going to save the Garnet because I think I can craft it into some jewelry that I can smith and sell for much more. So I'm going to save it. I don't think I really have anything to sell. No, nope, I'm not. Nothing to sell. Maybe I can buy something. Cooking pot, I don't know. Come across a lot of cooking stations normally in towns and stuff, so I don't need to carry one around. Pigs. My character will not trap souls. Now, I have no problem doing this with other characters, but because of the backstory of this character, um, and if you want to see it, let me know in chat, and I'll show it to you. But this character has some solid reasons why he does not like necromancers, or any sort of soul trapping, or manipulating people too much. Yeah, so he won't even if he has a, ma a magic uh, item that's powered by soul gems, that he, he won't he won't trap souls, so he won't buy empty soul gems. And he's aware that, say, a petty soul gem with a petty soul in it deserves to be released from that soul gem so he might use it to power his weapon to fight the good fight it's better than it being their soul being used for some you know, evil means so he's okay with that but he will never use soul cloak or anything <laughs> right well don't fall asleep Calibernius. Um, there are plenty of other things you could be doing with your time then. <laughs> ASMR, really? That. Okay. Oh, you mean it in a good way? Okay. Oh no, this is a different person. Hi. Oh, the moral sense in, in terms of uh, soul gems and stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Or... <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I don't have a very scintillating voice. I know. I'm not much of an entertainer this way. But okay. Now I'm all self-conscious. It's alright. Yeah, he's got nothing for me here. The road lead you to warm sands. I'm gonna go. So how you guys doing? Skyrim Junkie. Yeah. Same here. It's what I do to relax.
I'm a cage fighter normally, so this is pretty relaxing compared to cage fighting. I'm kidding. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't Thank you. Thank you, Calibernius. Nice sentiment from you. Great. Thank you. Oh. Okay. That's good to know. I appreciate that. Thanks. Hi. Uh, there is somebody watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to pause for a second. I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, you guys are patient. All right, we're back. Okay. So, what did, well, I forgot, I totally forgot why we're here. We came to... Oh, right. We're going to... We're looking for someone who can help us learn about restoration magic. And there's the tree everybody was telling you about. Know. Oh, done anything. That's a raggedy tree. Um... Did I come all this way for a dead tree? Oh, where do I go? Oh, sure, pick on the stranger. This building looks like more than a house. 
Oh, it's the Temple of Kinnereth. How did Gordon know that this was the Temple of Kinnereth? It's called Metagaming. Meta knowledge. No, my character knew. It, he just knew. This was the temple. It looks like a temple. And here we are. I can't bear it. Make it stop. Oh, jeez. My body burns. Um. No, I'm not going to kill him. In fact, let's put the weapons away. He's going to stupidly try heal. Does that feel better, wounded soldier? No. I hope I didn't just kill him. No. Healing doesn't heal other people. It heals just me. See, this is... I know this, but Rain doesn't know this yet. So he's going to learn. warm in here for this fur coat. Yeah, I don't look like a healer. I look like a killer. Who are you? Alfred? Okay, I don't know. This was as stupid as our feud with Clan Grey Mane. Okay. Is anyone home? Oh. Hi. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah? Yeah? Need something? Yeah? Talk to me. Yes? No, okay, okay. You're an idiot. <sighs> I guess he's not the receptionist of the Temple of Kinnereth. Excuse me. Can I ring a bell? Shirley? Shirley has that problem all the time with viewers. Shirley. I, I think I might have missed something earlier. Who's Shirley? Or are you lure luring me into a don't call me Shirley joke? Shirley Curry. Sorry. Is is um is mm -hmm. she a famous? Okay, I was just gonna say, is she a famous streamer? <laughs> okay, I will check out. Oh, that Shirley. Okay, I do know about her. Yeah, she's famous beyond Twitch, isn't she? Is she on Twitch or YouTube or something? I know Grandma Shirley. She's awesome. Oh, that's what I heard for Skyrim or Elder Scrolls 6, right? She's YouTube, all right. So they confuse her with her RP character and don't get what she's doing. So she, she does the RP thing on her live streams. I never actually watched her. I just am aware of her as a... As a Amazing person. Oh. Yeah, so they're gonna make they're gonna make a character of her. So okay, I'm not finding anyone who can help me learn about restoration. I'm just there's just a lot of sick people. Don't tell them. Okay, she went to Bethesda and got scanned. Oh, that's right. Did she get to meet uh, Todd Howard? Ah, uh, okay. Mm. How cool is that, right? I mean, we're going to start seeing more people that are older kind of getting into or staying with computer games. The priestess, right? I'm looking for the priestess. And she usually 
I know she sits right here and she moans about the tree. It's a shame, isn't it? She's in the marketplace. All right. Hmm. I'll pretend that I asked her, hey, Lucia, where is that priestess? She's going to say, in the marketplace. One gold? I think I can handle that. Oh, thank you. Divine. Wait. Bless your kind heart. Is that her? Sorry, I got distracted, Lucia. Is that her? Yeah. Ooh. Hello. It's a shame, isn't it? This is the Gilder Green. It was planted as a seedling in the early years of White Rock. No, that's fine, Calabrinius. The of Kinneret could send something holy in I appreciate it. Your to hear the winds of the goddess in its branches. Presence. They built the temple. Of course, not as many pilgrims these days. Hmm. Why haven't the pilgrims been the coming? The big dead tree isn't very inspiring if you're coming to worship the divine of wind and rains. Kinareth gives life, and we need a living tree to be her symbol. Makes sense. Is there any way to revive this tree? About that. Trees like this never really die. They only slumber. Hmm. I think if we had some of the sap from the parent tree, we could wake up its child. Have but you thought of you watering it? To the Elder Gleam, you couldn't tap it. Not with any normal metal. Normal metal? What kind of weapon? Elder Gleam is older than metal, from a time before men or elves. To even affect it, you have to tap into the old magic. You'll have to deal with the Hag Ravens. I've heard about the weapon they've made for sacrificing Spriggans. It's called Nettlebane. The Hags terrify me, or I would have gone after it myself. So, you want me to find Hag Ravens and get a weapon from them that kills and eats tree essence or something. And that's gonna help your tree? This, I don't know, this sounds like two wrongs trying to make a right. Your spirit is strong. Kinareth's winds will guide your path. It's held in a Maybe it's not as bad as it sounds. Rock. Okay. I now. Orphan rock. Orphan rock is what she said, right? Okay, blessings of nature. Retrieve nettlebane. All right. All right. Far. Where is it? Okay, it's all. It's down here. Oh, it's not too far. It's in cold country. I better bundle up. Okay, what I was saying, we were, we were talking, Cal, uh, Calibernius was, we were talking about Shirley, the Grandma Skyrimmer. Uh, I'm not going to say Skyrimmer again. Skyrim player. And I was about to say that, um, <laughs> no, it's just, no. Skyrim player. It should not be called Skyrimmer. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see a lot... We're going to see the average age of uh, gamers spread out a lot more, I guess. We're going we're gonna to see a lot of older gamers. Because I'm 50 now. And my generation... I don't know how, how old you guys are, but we grew up with computer games computer games emerged in the, the really basic forms you know in the late 70s right <laughs> oh <laughs> you don't say <laughs> I, wonder if we should offer these Come to chat um, I don't know I haven't been I haven't gotten around that much I haven't spread you know <sighs> yes the pioneers of gaming, yes, our generation. Okay, um, so you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't, there's no need for me to go on, right? We did the the TV games. We called them TV games, I guess. The consoles that hooked up to your TV. She's 86 or 87. Oh, 
God bless Shirley. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm quite... Let's see. My, my father's 79. So. And I wish he played games. He should play games more. I think my dad and I would get along a little better <laughs> if we played games. But no, we get along great. Staying out of trouble, Kinsman. Let me guess. Someone but yeah, we, we are, you know, I'm talking to the, the three of us. We're not youngsters. We're middle aged plus. And games were always a part of our childhood. Computer games. And games, uh, it's, I, I talk to a lot of people who sort of say, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. It, it's totally because I've, it's the, my, I have, I'm in a little tiny square on your screen and um, the filters and stuff. It's oh, it's not exactly. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? You know Shirley? Surely you must be kidding. All right, I, I swear that's the last time I'll do that joke. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting, getting attacked. By random materials. So I guess what I was saying was, um, yeah. That. Yeah. The whole human flesh. Gee, wh where have you been? What are you doing with human flesh and human heart? That rings alarm bells. So you chat with Shirley. Sort of not, sort of not really. Okay. All right, I, that's that's still pretty cool. I mean, if I chatted with her once, I would brag that to everybody. I totally met Shirley. Is she cool? Of course she is. What am I kidding? What's she like, Calvarius? Tell. Chat and tell. Nice lady. Hey, it doesn't surprise me. If you're 86 and you play Skyrim, how bad can you be? <laughs> right? But I, I had this conversation with one of my students. I'm a teacher at a university in Korea. And one of my students, uh, I teach a music class, uh, two music classes. And um, this one student of mine uh, was chatting and we were talking, she was surprised that I played games. Because I think she's not, she wasn't used to, you know, her, one of her professors playing computer games. So she, what do you play? So I told her, not just games. And so we had this conversation and and I told her how, you know, it's not really, it shouldn't be too surprising that people my age and maybe a bit older are into computer games because we, we don't see, we used to see computer games as being um, stuff of child, like a toys that kids play with. And eventually you reach a certain, certain level of maturity and you just, you know, don't, you just leave the toys behind because, you know, you've got other things to do. But what's different about computer games, it's become an industry and they've grown up with us. They held on to their original users and we're, we're in it for life. And uh, computer if computer games remained as they were, of course we would have gotten rid of them and moved on to other things, you know? Uh, adult stuff, just like before that, right? It was, uh, we, we play board games and stuff and, you know, baseball in the park, but then once we discovered girls or boys, if you're, you know, you know uh, and relationships and all those things just kind of take over and you just do that, you know, and the games get left behind, but computer games grew up with us. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. 
I didn't need to do that. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, I'm going to read your, your things, really. I'm sorry. It's frustrating. Oh, really? <laughs> she gets burned out on some viewers. I, of course. Okay. Yeah, computer computer stuff really... Yeah, just it's endlessly fascinating and continuously develop continually developing. So endlessly engaging. Yeah. Can you imagine um, being 86 and having to deal with <laughs> the average YouTube live viewer to deal with all that? weird, obnoxious stuff. I mean, I can't handle it. I'm 50. She's 86. Yeah. I bet. People could suck. Just leave her alone, man. Be nice. Perspective. Yeah, I've met a lot of cool people on Twitch. Yeah, people can suck. Yeah. That's true. You guys seem pretty cool. I got lucky. But I, you know, eventually I know if I keep doing this that I'm going to encounter people that are going to rub me the wrong way and I'm not going to be ready for it. And I'll just have to just go. I have to get used to those, you know, timeout commands and man commands and stuff. Do you guys ever have, do you guys, do you guys stream? By guys, I mean people. I don't. I don't. I don't know your genders or anything. Oh yeah, long timer. You're a modder. That's awesome. You know, you, people like you, have kept this game relevant for nine years. <laughs> McAwful, do you, you're a modder too? Are you both modders? That's amazing. No, seriously, you guys... You're the reason I still play this game and it's still relevant and there are still thousands of people tw uh, Twitch streaming this stuff. Okay, yeah, me too. I, I've been using, I would have given up this game for other, you know, for maybe The Witcher or something like that a long time ago. But um, because of the mods, it just, it's like saying, okay, this game, is cool but I'd love to be able to do this and then you go and you find a mod that does that and then you're back in for another couple of years 500 mods no way that's that's amazing you must have a pretty specked out PC mm. to handle that many mods yeah, I'm kind of, I, I used to have a lot more mods and I changed my computer and I thought I would just kind of do just the basic mods that I want to, and I'm still using, I'm not using Sky UI anymore. I used to, but, and I like it. Ah, <laughs> oh, I bet, I bet it, I bet it is. Some stamina, now let's do health. I don't want to die too 
And I'll choose where to put these perks later. Yeah, I bet. What kind of... Um, let's see, do you, do you use basic need mods? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. I use the, the need ones and... Uh, excuse me, there's a... There's a very large dragon. I hope it doesn't see me. I don't think it saw me. Okay. It's the Hellcat Dragon. On this, but rain doesn't. Uh, I am kind of, I, I'm not really thinking about where I'm going. Uh, I, I am going to the Hagraven Lair, but uh, I did. I used alternate start. Mm -hmm. That's that's why I didn't. That's why that dragon is there. Mm -hmm. To eat, sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want to, I like immersion. I like the immersive mods. I do have a bow. I think, yeah, I've got an Imperial bow. <laughs> I'm just level seven right now, so yeah. Yeah, I do, I, I have played, I've been playing this game in vanilla for a long time and I've had mods for many years. But when I, when I play a new character, I pretend like I don't know anything. So it's more fun that way. It's role play, kind of. <laughs> oh, you mean a mod for the Hag Ravens? I'm sorry, a bow for the Hag, Ra Hag Ravens. Oh, yeah. Fallout New Vegas. I was talking about my, my student the other day, uh, and she said that she liked, that her one of her favorite games was Fallout New Vegas. And she didn't know about um, the voice actor who played Benny. Um, what's his name? Matt. Matt. Um, one of the two Matts from Friends. <laughs> Not Matt LeBlanc, the other... Matthew Perry, thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, she didn't know anything about Friends or um, that guy. But I just said the only thing I didn't like about that game was his performance as a voice actor in that game. Uh, <laughs> which was really lame. Didn't you think so? Oh, he was a Fallout geek after Fallout 3. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know. He really phoned in that performance. I think I would, I would have tried to give it a more you know, know, inspired performance. Style. And I know he's a, he's he's a pretty okay actor. He's funny. I'm not joining the Stormcloak Rebellion. Yeah, he was a bit lame, right? He was doing him, but on a board day. I don't know. Maybe he didn't feel like he was being paid enough or something. I don't know. But, because really, the part, part of the reason I was excited about that game was that he was voicing that guy. And I think it was a good choice. I think they expected him to do awesome in that role. I mean, being, like, really sarcastic and, you know, Chandler. Holy... Okay. <laughs> I should have expected this. Okay, I have to focus now. Am I being attacked by the hags? Oh, crap. Save Ola. You guys can watch me perish in flames. <laughs> I was talking to you guys. You have focus. See if I can get out of this. <sighs> no, this is so bad. Okay. I am completely outgunned.
dodge and faint. I saved it. I saved it right before I died. Yeah, so. Oh, oh no. Look what I've done. Look what I've done. I've set myself into a death loop. <laughs> I totally did. <laughs> it's like Groundhog's Day in Hell. Yep. It's like every time I wake up, there's no way. Yeah, I, I have to. I have to load. I have to do an auto load. <gasps> no, that far back. Okay. Hmm. But I'm enjoying talking to you guys, so I'm. No, 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 no. I'm not blaming you. Oh, that was totally my bad. I should have known. I, it's not the first time I've dealt with those hags. So, <laughs> no, I like I like talking. I've dealt with these hags before, but not. Were those the hags that I was supposed to kill? So now I remember them coming at me not all at once, but one at a time. Yeah, I'm just forgetting. Okay. Maybe I can... Yeah, the dreaded death loop. Gone. Oh, it's just down there. It's just... Riverwood. Yeah. The fireballs. That's what did it. But I did take down a few of them, didn't I? Did you guys see that? few of them Where do you want at to level go? 7. <laughs> but yeah, fireballs. I'm oh, sorry, was that Ivar's dead? I have to go back and look now. No, it's Riverwood, of course, I right? My carriage is... Where do you want to go? Two, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Best of good. <laughs> I didn't, I, I'm not, um, oh. 50, Climb and back and we'll be off. it's just down the road, yeah, I, I'm not, uh, prepared yet, yep. I'm still, uh, almost getting downright hot. oh, thanks, thanks, Calibrinius, oh, crack in the back, right, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I should never have walked into that. I should have seen that coming, but I was too... I was doing other things. You knew. That's all right. Um, there's a... There's something about gaming that... Um, yeah, they can. That's right. That's true. They can be pretty nasty. Yeah, they have... They must have a lot of Magicka. Because they can just throw those fireballs one right after another. There's this thing about um, gaming I, I noticed a lot. That when, if, if, if you're playing single player and you're just all by yourself and it's just you in the room playing and you get wasted by something, um, just, it, it's annoying and you, and you gotta get this like, Urgh, darn it, you know, losing kind of that law, losing a game kind of feeling. And you get like, Urgh. if I'm playing um, any game, like even if it's CSGO or something, and I get wasted, just ravaged um, more than a couple times, it's really vexing and awful. But when you, if you're part of a, an online group, if you have a teammates or if you're chatting with someone, in real time, it suddenly the whole experience is funny. Do you experience that? It's funny. The experience of, of, 
of uh, just sucking something, like just doing terribly at a game, goes from annoying and awful to just hilarious and not a problem. Do you guys feel that way? Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, there you go. Pack hunters, are you? Nice yeah, you get up and try again. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But there's... When you're alone in your room and you're doing it, it's just like, uh... But when there's other people around, you get to share that funny moment with them. Okay. It's not just me. It's like when you... If you're playing something like Star Citizen and you get PvP to death and you're just alone, it's annoying. You feel kind of griefed in a way. I do. I do play Star Citizen. Um, I haven't in a few weeks, but yeah. But if you're in a if you're in a clan, not a clan. What's it called? Not a clan. Uh, if you're in a an org, and you got people around, it's way more fun to get blown up if you're in an org, because <laughs> then you can just laugh about it. And, you know, they might have your back later. But it's just, I don't know, it's just something psychological. Psychologically, you know, padding, padded about the experience. I don't know why. It's a bit interesting. Yeah, health. I'm investing in health. Good idea. You're in a big org, okay? People seem to be holding on. Yeah, I am kind of. I'm kind of among those people you're talking about. McAwful. Um, if that is your real name. Um, yeah, I, and I think there's something to that. I like the game. I'm, I'm, I have great hopes for it, but I'm not one of those people who, who are endlessly cynical about it. I'm just, oh, sweet. I'm not going to give them any more money. Yet. Um... But, you know, I only own a couple ships, and that's as far as I want to go with it. I've, already, I've sunk something like $140 US in it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you the dying thing yeah yeah their vision as in the developers vision CIG yeah yep mm -hmm. yeah, I'm with you I I I see I see their their vision of it too yeah and it's still very appealing to me that 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 freedom of being in a, a you know an open space world universe the verse okay oh <laughs> i didn't i was just making a joke about you know because mcawful is such a great name but if someone said oh my name is mcawful i was like oh, really is that your real name <laughs> okay nice to meet you eric i'm gordon it's not damn sight, it's Gordon. Eric McAwful. <laughs> Eric McAwful, that's awesome. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. All right, I'm um, judging by the fact that there's a bandit out front guarding that there would be bandits inside. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Oh, right, okay. I guess so. If you're from Norway. Um, by your... Jailike Norge? Is that correct? Can I say that? 
Jeg er lige Norge. <laughs> it's terrible. Don't, 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 don't make me feel like I did it right. Come on. No, I, I, I also teach music, and I had a, uh, I taught a, a young student who's from Norway. Uh, I taught him um, the the alt horn brass instrument, and he. I told them to kind of make the lessons flow a little bit better. I let I let him teach me some expressions in Norwegian, and that's the one I remember. <laughs> It just means I like Norway. Yeah. Yeah, living as an expat, I get a chance to meet people from all over the world. And it's been a wonderful experience. I love my life here as an expat. Because I get to meet amazing people from everywhere. I would have it no other way than to just meet people from all over the place. So I I know Swedes and people from Finland, Norway. There's a lot, a lot of Norwegians in in my area of town because of the shipping companies, and there are all kinds of companies that have to do with providing services to, for building ships. Like this this particular family was in a company that made refrigeration systems, like industrial size refrigeration systems for ocean liners and where I live in Korea is, is an ocean port city called Busan in the south and it was until recently a big kind of shipbuilding center so I met if I know people from Angola and Russia lots of Russians and I have Uzbek students and Thai, Thais and Vietnamese and Chinese, and Japanese, and, um, and of, you know, of course, of course, most of my friends are Korean. That's it's a wonderful place to live. Train to Busan, yeah, mm -hmm. that's the city. That's. That's the that's that's the movie. Yeah, it's a big movie, right? That's about the city I live in. Well, I mean, I think I don't know if they actually get there, but if they don't get eaten by zombies first, I actually never saw that movie. I haven't seen it either, but it, we're aware of it, and that's enough, right? I don't like zombie movies very much. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good, I, apparently. <laughs> I'll take their word for it. See, I'll play games with Draugr and stuff in it, but... Zombie movies. Nah. Yeah. Okay, you can confirm, Calibernius. You saw it then, right? There's a sequel. <gasps> really? Oh, you're afraid of Draugr. Oh, yeah. Well, they're pretty scary. They're, they're worthy of fear. So there's a sequel to that now. So it's is it out now? Calibernius? Is it out now? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, we skipped a little. Oh, we changed. We changed. Back to Norwegian. Oh. Ah, right, 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 right. I love it when they use actual languages in games. When we were playing, I was playing, um... All right, okay. I was playing GTA 5, I think it was. Yeah, GTA 5. 
and there was um, you're driving around the city, and my wife was uh, who's Korean. Um, was watching me play and then she saw I had driven into Koreatown and all the signs were in Korean and a lot of the signs were really funny uh, in Korean so she noticed those and we were sitting there reading them and laughing laughing at the signs that they have on the kind of like strange names for restaurants and things it was cool. but they actually hired people to write things that made sense in Korean Okay. Ooh, yeah, okay. Mm. I guess that sometimes happens too, right? So that's a joke that you guys can have on Elder Scrolls Online. The High King Joran. Oh. <laughs> you can make fun of the king. Why would they name him that? Why would they name him that? Didn't do their research, yeah. All they had to do was find someone who spoke Norwegian and just say, hey, what do you think? What do you think of these names? All they had to say was, nope, don't do it. It's a girl's name. Oh. Pray to Stendar while you can. Pray to whomever I want when I can. And you will go down and stay down. Okay, key, lockpicks, good. Yeah, and now there's really no excuse for that, right? Because game developers know that their game will, you know, if they're a big developer, that their game will be played all over the world by people who know these, you know, who know languages and stuff. They could, it's not like they need to hire someone, they could just do it personal search you know it's not like I mean how hard is it to figure out a list of names you know exactly look it up on Wikipedia sure how hard can that be certainly they have time to do that and I don't think they'd want to you know, I, I think if I was in the market research right beta testers it should have been caught In English, you can just, you know, you can just name all your characters Pat. <laughs> and you don't know what gender they are. Pat. Didn't they name a character in um, Firefly, Jane? J A Y N E Jane. And it was this big burly character, the the big tough guy. Yeah, right, Jane. Maybe it was deliberate, you know. I'll be in my bunk, right? Firefly. Yeah, I love that that one season of greatness. He was very randy. Oh yeah. I'll be in my bunk. Ooh, something I'm being fired at. Come on. All you got. Okay, I want to talk about Firefly. I suddenly don't want to play anymore. I want to talk about Firefly. Oh yeah, the movie. Yeah, they could have done without that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't like how that ended at all. Yeah. It, it's had so much potential, Joss Whedon. Fox Network playing it out of sequence. The episodes, yeah. It's kind of like oh, going back to the the whole the naming thing, the Jane thing. It might have, you could argue that it made him tougher in the same way that in that, um, uh, that, uh, oh, 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 Johnny Cash, the Johnny Cash song, 
boy a uh, boy named Sue. Yeah, you got you you beat me to it, McAuffle. Yes. You beat me to it, Eric. A boy named Sue, right? It made him it gave him the strength to sort of rise above, right? Maybe Jane. Maybe Jorun. Hmm? The theory. It, but it was probably just Oh. Okay. It was probably just something they overlooked. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Alright. Alright. Am I still alive? Okay. Still alive. That movie kind of depressed me. Yeah, it depressed me too. Yeah. I don't I don't watch that very much. I watch the other episodes over and over, but I skip the movie a lot. Right, he just wanted to kill everyone off. He just wanted to do other things. He wanted to make, you know, other things. And he did go on to do other things, right? Yeah. And then, as time went on, he started being invited to the, what, the conventions and things where they'd have, when he probably didn't realize just how huge and passionate the fan base was for for Firefly I got to it really late I don't know about you guys okay so you waited for it Eric yeah yeah once that's enough right just saw it once Come back here. you gonna shoot the arrow at me hmm You were still watching the show when it is still air. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't get it until way later. I am the opposite of there you are. of hip on that one. Yeah. I just don't hope this guy doesn't shoot me in the back. Okay. I'm gonna focus a little. Gonna do a little clever dodging. Uncanny dodge. <laughs> you can see my head moving back. Alright, I had to take one arrow. Before I cut him in half with my shield. Okay. Buffy. Yeah, I, I, I always hear great things about Buffy, but I've never seen it. I, I've been living in Korea for almost 20 years now and so I, I miss stuff like that or I don't get the channels that carry it oh yeah right yep I, I yep that just makes you human yep it means your <laughs> your sense of immersion is right on par yep. was this the end of it Surely there must be more. Come on. Immersion is everything. Hmm. Yeah, I think I definitely want to see Buffy and Angel just... And those are Joss, Joss Whedon things, right? Just to clarify. I think, yeah, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I've enough people that I know whom I respect, including present company, um, say great things about Buffy, but I've never seen a single episode. It's just the weird life I live. Um, it's not by choice. It's because I, I live in a different cultural environment. Ooh, hello, Iron Mine. Iron Bean. Buffy is what I Oh, okay. Great. And rich. <laughs> Certainly did that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna touch the whole immersive 
immersive uh, element of, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the series was better than the movie. How often does that happen? Have you guys watched any of the Witcher TV series? To compare movie versus or game versus okay it's definitely a, a, a 90s thing that I completely missed I was around I was in I lived in Chicago in the 90s so I probably shouldn't have missed that yeah I did see the movie I was I was doing other things I was trying to keep from getting evicted <laughs> 90s in Chicago it's not an easy life for a composer, musician, jazz musician. Not a whole lot of time for TV watching, except for Friends. Friends. We had time for that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you're missing much, Calibrinius. It's a TV thing, yeah. Yeah, watch Seinfeld. Yep, yeah, Seinfeld. Yeah, and The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those things that I say, oh, I don't watch TV, and then they say, what about this? Oh, oh except that. And what about this? Uh, except that. How about this? Yeah, that too. Okay, so I watch TV. I give up. I mean, there's some things you, even if you're not a TV watcher, some things you just have to like because you like you're into the genre, right? Like the Mandalorian. If you like Star Wars, you gotta watch The Mandalorian. Yeah, agreed. And I can't get that unless I, you know, obtain it. Ways. I kind of borrow it off my friends. That's the story I'm going to run. Yeah. Mm hmm. Star Wars Generation, I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot. Star Wars has taken a lot of. Uh, guff from a lot of people and justified and, and the I don't know the 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 prequels are pretty painful but um, generally the whole it's like you were mentioning about the star citizen thing I get the vision I love the vision the world of Star Wars I'm in I will always be in yeah. At the Chinese theater? No way. You might have been in some of the footage that the news was doing. Yeah, Menace. Yeah, right. That seems to be something that everybody can agree on throughout all of the Star Wars things is John Williams' scores. And he never dropped the ball. On... I mean, he's just a brilliant composer. And he, it, no matter, I mean, he must have had the sense that things were kind of story-wise going off the rails a bit for the Star Wars thing, but John Williams never, never ceases to give it his all, and even in his lesser scores, it's brilliant. I analyze that stuff joyfully. Born in Los Angeles, live in Oregon. Oh, okay, so that that would have put you in the Chi at the Chinese the man. It used to be called Man's Chinese Theater, right? Yeah, I'm really glad that we can all agree that John Williams does not ever suck in the whole Star Wars thing. 
I'm going the wrong direction again. Okay. Because we're talking about Star Wars. Oh, Grauman's. Okay, is that what it's called now? Or which is the old name for it? Grauman's or Man's? The original name for the Chinese theater was Grauman's. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You always get into trouble, whichever way you go. Oh, there's a road. Oh. I must be closer than I think. Oh, I see. I don't save enough. Okay. Okay, Cal, you're, you're saying that Grauman's was the original name of the Chinese theater? the yes refers to. It's okay. Yep. Immersion is everything. Yeah. Zimmer. I love Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Uh, he's... I, I teach a... I te actually teach a class on, on film music. <laughs> so, don't get me started on Hans Zimmer. When I first experienced, before I realized that Hans Zimmer was great, um, I, I heard a score of his in the 80s. This was, this was after the um, Driving Miss Daisy soundtrack, when he did it all digital, and he just did the whole score himself. He did this score for uh, a movie called Green Card, with, I think it was with Andy McDowell and... Um, Who's the French actor Jean? Um, <laughs> you know Ger Gerard Depardieu. And I I remember watching that movie and hearing the score, and thinking, oh, this is terrible. I just didn't like the score for Green Card. I just thought it was too 80s synth poppy or something. I don't know. I was all I was all against it. But when I hear what he's done since then, he obviously is a genius. Ah, right. Oh yeah, definitely. I think I'm just fighting That's close enough. bandits all the time. I think I'm, I guess my first mission is to kill all the bandits in Skyrim and then go after looks like he's practicing using his scabbard yeah definitely orc do I have a two handed Bags are right there. Should I just grab them and row away? <laughs> yeah. Hey, work. Back over here. Run I'm away! <laughs> you did it. They're not gonna follow me either, are they? <laughs> totally worked. Oh, okay. I, I want to put. All right, he wasn't so bad. Okay. Now Archer, huh? Yeah. Uncanny dodge. Uncanny dodge. And we hate it when NPCs do this. But when I do it, it's okay. Alright, I can take a punch. Oh! Come back here. I can loot your corpse. And a chest. 
Mad Warrior. I'm going to put that away and read it later. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how about, you know, stealing from thieves? Bandits. Who probably got this loot from you know murdering innocent people who couldn't defend themselves that's what bandits as i may quote npcs in this game bandits are cowards i always laugh at that that line reading there's this, this one actor who says bandits are cowards and it sounds very chicago that sounds like a chicago accent bandits are cowards <laughs> i don't know if you guys hear it that way Viking ethics can be odd. Yeah, I bet. Unethical to steal, but if you killed the ones you were stealing from, you were robbing them instead. And it was seen as more honorable. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And then we're sort of getting into the ethics of, you know, Honor among thieves, right? No honor among thieves. What did this guy have? Okay, I already eluded him. Was there a... Okay, there was no... Okay, they were just set up. Cannibals. Oh, oh, okay, you're not talking about the Vikings <laughs> for a second there. I thought I didn't read the whole thing. In Bosmer lore, stealing is a skill. It's a virtue to be successful at. The right of theft is part of their culture. Hmm. But then again, they were cannibals. <laughs> oh, wood elves, right. The Bosmer. Right. Yeah, I remember just, I really liked being wood elves because I think in D&D, &D, um, the equivalent was something else, but you, to be good archers and rangers and, you know, you Wood Elves, I think. Yeah, Wood Elves. I'll get the call Wood Elves. The Bosmer here. So... Oh, he's... He's, um... He's a Skyrim native-born boy. He's a Nord. Yep. Yeah, Bosmer. So wood elves are cannibals. It's kind of like when we first realized, yeah, nobody made a big deal about on Endor, um, the Ewoks are cannibals. Well, they're not, they're not cannibals because they don't eat their own kind, assumedly, but they, they were gonna eat Luke and Han and Chewie for dinner to honor C-3PO, right? So when that, Real, when that reality kind of hit, he walks eat people. Oh, you're talking about my character? Is he Ulfric aligned or Imperial? He, um, none of the above yet. He, he was, okay. He doesn't think about politics. He didn't think about politics very much because his he was his father died when he was 13, so he was kind of consumed with feeding his mother who was sickly, right? And his sister who was younger and couldn't take care of herself. So, he didn't really have time to to take sides politically and he he couldn't really join up with the armies or anything because he had he had to take care of his family I don't know if that's the way it works or there was a, he was cons he avoided conscription or something I don't follow the pact so everyone is safe okay the green pact yeah I shouldn't just read the last message I shouldn't go back
I go around this way to get up the mountain? Oh, you guys are really into the lore, I see. Oh, what, really? Toward hell again? Hey, and it's a great way to spend your time. Yep. You're, you are among fellow addicts. Hey, getting really involved in the lore of a world that's fictional nothing wrong with that. People have been doing that for ever. Some take it more seriously than others. Some think it's true. But yeah, I have friends who are um, totally involved in the lore and know way more than I do about. It. Yeah, I, I've never really gotten too what are you? Who is setting fire to wool or to foxes? Oh, okay. The fire atronach. You're not gonna hit me behind this bowl. Okay, yes you are. Uncanny dodge. Yeah. You're gonna get me behind this tree, are you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. How are you feeling? No, oh, no. Strike three. Ooh, oh, no, you got one. Fus Roda. It's gonna blow up, isn't he? Oh, fell down and blew up. Do I go down there and get him? To get the fire salts? Oh, okay. I have to. I have to see what you said that you're afraid of getting crap for. Okay. Okay. All right. Nah. Yeah. It's not worth it. I think they only drop. Oh. Okay. This person didn't fare as well as I did. Which. He said Tor Talgan, so I'm gonna go. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, you know what? I think I went. Because I don't save as often, it doesn't know that I've been to Helgen. To Helgen and back. Guys, I think I need to step away and I will find the dragon. Alright. <laughs> there should be a sign. Beware of dragon. He may bite and toast you. I'm going to step away for a bit. Um, I, I, I know you've read this already, so but it's I don't I don't have any proper um, be back soon screen yet but I will. I will make one soon, but I'm just going to throw you guys to the to the backstory screen, and I'll be back soon. Intermission! Intermission! And I'll throw a little
Yeah, I don't care too much about the character build that much. Oh. Yeah, and the, I, I, that's what I really like about Skyrim is the, the whole leveling thing. You don't have to choose, you don't have to choose a, you know, an archetype class to start with. You can just kind of develop your own by what you do. Seven hours, no doubt. 100% Magicka. You can get a lot done in seven hours, can't you? Did he start the character from scratch? Yeah, learn by doing. I like that better than choosing your path as if you have a, a system kind of like maybe like Mass Effect, where you get to the level screen and then you can kind of choose what how your character, what your character learns, whether it has anything to do with what you've done or not. Um, and that's, that's all right. Excuse me. But this way, you kind of like what you want to do and what you do, you get better at it. Kind of more like life, the whole, you know, 10,000 hours thing. Okay. Oh, so is he kind of new to the game? Barbell? Oh, okay. Maybe you're talking about somebody else. Oh, yeah. His channel. Right, right, right. New. Old hand. Okay. Playing that character for a couple of weeks. Okay. I, I see. Venison, potato, no, 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 raw potato, carrot, green apple, bread, meal. Right. Charmed baryon. I'm writing that down. I will check that out. I'm always looking for interesting things to watch. It's my habit now when I sit down. We uh, we don't, not a whole lot of Korean households have uh, a proper dinner table like we would think of it. So, some do, but we don't. Um, so we just kind of eat our food wherever we are in the house, on our lap or 
somewhere, so I eat it at my computer table and watch YouTube or Twitch. So I mostly eat what, eat dinner or eat lunch and watch Twitchers. Yeah. Yeah, we don't sit down and have the say grace and, you know, <laughs> eat our meal all together. Some households have it, but uh, the table, we don't, and most don't. Yeah. That's just what we do, right? And if you don't watch TV, you'd rather just sit in front of your computer. That's where all the entertainment is, right? Any true sons and daughters That's where we're going to eat, too. Tell them to head to Windhelm. Ulfric yep. wants to see them. That's the times. Those are the times. Yep. <laughs> that's a lot of... That's a lot of days ago, Eric. If I recall, we should be getting pretty close. Yeah, getting kind of close to Orphan Rock. So, get ready to have my butt handed to me again. Ooh, I can spot coin purse from far away. Okay, now there's. All right, there's always usually a reason for all this. I see a bunch of. Oh, great! I'm freezing. I really have to pay attention to this because I will die. Okay, I can I can puzzle over the bones later. Okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Isn't there an encampment? Yep, yeah, right. One up here. Okay. Oh, whew. good thing. Fight the entire legion myself if they dare show their faces here. Will this work? Good. Okay, I'm warming up. Cloak time. Yep. I yes, time to focus. With my brothers, waging war against the Empire. Think you might be in the wrong place, friend. Yeah, I'm in the Ancient wrong place. Soldiers gleam like fresh fallen snow and clank like a kitchen. If they head this way, we'll know it. Oh wow. You know, some of the faithless Imperials. Some of the uh, fire places, some of the fire pits, whatever. Campfires faithless dogs who this don't belongs to warm you very much. And then others do. Have you found that? Fight. This one does or a good job well. of it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're really hurting for, you know, Next temperature, see, and you go find, you oh, finally, I see a, a fire in the distance. So you go towards it, and you're almost dead, and you're like, oh, finally, I can survive. And then it doesn't warm you very well. And you end up dying anyway. But that was a fire! Should have totally worked. God damn waiting. Oh, goodness. These are not happy soldiers. Dallas okay, got so that's it. We're right on top of these. Okay. Hmm. What are my resources? Stendar blocks damage. Yeah, I think I should probably wear that one. Potions? Just healing. That's pretty much it. I don't have any I don't have any tricks up my sleeve for this. Dub. Let's guide to you. The trick is going to be save at the right time so we don't end up in the death loop. That's hilarious. Okay. Saving. You know what I should do? 
you know, if this was if this was a yeah, good. If we were playing with a DM or something, I would say, okay, I I'm gonna try to talk some of these soldiers into coming with me to check something out, and then have them waste the witches and act like I didn't know they were there. And the DM would probably say, okay, it works, and then... and then they accuse you of leading them into an ambush. And then they kill you. Oh! Where did you come from? Yeah, talking talking about ambush, not get ambushed. <laughs> totally deserve that. <laughs> yeah, I'm into immersion, but I'm not above quick saving. I'm not a permadeath guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna need us a, a better plan than this, and I'm gonna shut up. I'm going to play Sniper now. Alright, I see four enemies. It's so hard to see. But I'm keeping the high ground for now. As soon as I go down there, I'm toast. Guys, just look away. <laughs> it's embarrassing. that I almost did it again I almost I just saved and that would have sent me into a certain death loop Some grease, you know. Some <laughs> Any suggestions? <laughs> Should I just run? Oh, see, I don't, I don't have control before the the fireball is already in motion. I don't have control. 
Yeah, there's no way. Okay, you can save that one when she does. Okay. Yeah, I try to dash away, but I don't get control of my character until I'm dead. Yeah. This puts me... Where does it put me? So far. Hmm. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> You're right. You're right, Callie. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I should probably know when I'm licked. Hmm. I'm gonna maybe try. Hey, look at that. Maybe I can scamper away. Did I just get rid of my... I did, didn't I? I just got rid of my... My quick save. Yeah. Yeah, I have no right to play this. Yeah, bad. Yeah, let's... Um, let's know our limitations and do something else. What do you say, guys? Yeah, I'm clearly outgunned here. There's there are four of them. Yeah, and they're seem they seem to be all over the place, right? Yeah, we'll do something else. We'll do something else. Fun. Um, let's see. What can we do? We could practice. We could practice restoration. Instead of, you know, suggestion? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's good. That's good, solid advice. Yep. Yeah, I should have been doing that. Yep. I agree. Quick saves. Yeah, it's not just quick save. You have to do regular full saves then you can have the sequence of things um yeah that's that's definitely the best way to do it so since we're really close to riverwood anyway I'm gonna see if they have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's what I. That's how I was failing this twice. This time. Yeah. Never play the game forward. Quick saves. Full saves. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Agreed. Be smarter next time. Maybe. Well, one of us has to do something. I said no. No adventures, no theatrics, no. There's theatrics. always this quest. Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. No, you, you, it's totally solid th reasoning. This. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> You're right. Customer. It's always this. I could do the kind of main quest thing. This is well, I don't know what you overheard, but the Riverwood Trader is still open. Yeah, Feel free yeah to it shop. is. I like how they react to everything. Um, how excited they are to get the, the, the claw back and everything. <laughs> yeah, right. I think this is a this is written to be an early game quest. So 
Yeah, those those hags are gonna have to wait before they see me again, and that's fine. I was kind of getting greedy because um, Danica Piercepring in White Run is a master level um, restoration trainer, and I, I was getting greedy, so I, I should probably go for the the, the more modest route. Hmm? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And what a brilliant moment, right? When you when you realize that the the the, the three signals on, or the three signs on the claw were what let you in. Oh, that's great. You kind of figure that out from what's it? Silas, what was his name? The guy who says, "Cut me down from here." That guy. Yeah, I love I love this quest. This is great. It's brilliant. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, we, we did have a bit of a, a break in. Cheers. We, we still have plenty to sell. Robbers were only after one thing. So I must, I think it's... An ornament. Solid gold in the shape of a dragon's so what, claw. what time is it where you guys are? Let's do it. You could? I've got some coin coming in from my last shipment. It's yours if you bring my claw back. Get those thieves, you should shrinking it. Oh yeah, right. Northwest of town. <laughs> right. So you know, I never, I never thought of it that way, Cal. Um, if I may call you Cal, Cal, Calibernius. Yeah. When you, when you, when you put it back, he, he says this thing. Oh, he kind of laughs and says, "Oh, it looks smaller than I remember it." <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't think of it that way. That he was maybe blaming you for shrinking it or starting to melt it down or something <laughs> 3 p.m okay yeah good afternoon so that would be oh yes the solution is in the palm of your hand yep that's great i love i love it when Another thing I, I love about this game is that it doesn't always tell you exactly what to do and where to go. You kind of have to figure things out. 6, 6.05 a.m. And you've been up all night. Okay. Night owl. That's, that, that, that's totally me, too. I don't stay up that late, usually. But, um, yeah... Yep. And Lucan? Yes. Night owls so unite. Now you don't have to go, do you? Oh, really? Well, I think your new helper here needs a guide. Uh, no, I. By the eight, fine. But only to the edge of town. Wasn't that the guy who did. What time is it in Korea? It's um, 11.07 p.m. And I had a day we off today. To town and across the bridge I don't to teach get to on Bleak Falls Fridays. Barrow. You can see it from here, though. The mountain we walked just something like buildings. 11 kilometers, 12 kilometers today, my wife and I. Because I had a day off. That's what there. we do. Those old crypts are filled with nothing but traps, trolls, and who knows what else. So, my legs are tired. And gaming. All oh, right, you have dogs. I That's awesome. I love dogs. I mean, we We're have dog people, totally. That are worth just as much what dogs do you have? Lucan found the claw about a year after he opened Dark the store. Scares or what else? He never quite explained where he got it. Oh, right, that's what she was saying. Yeah. Night owl, dog people unite. But you. <laughs> The Doge. Oh, I don't know that meme. This is the bridge out of town. The path up the mountain to the northwest don't leads to Bleak Falls Barrow. I guess I should get back to my brother. He'll throw a fit if I take too long. <laughs> Such a child. It's a breed dog that's famous on the internet? Or that's a specific dog you're talking about? 
Very famous internet dog, okay. Mara bless you for agreeing to help us. I th you think I'd know that because I'm a dog person. I don't. My wife is totally into watching dog videos. She loves it. And so do I. Speaking of... Okay, wolves aren't dogs, but close enough, right? Yeah, I, I'm such a dog person that I defend dogs in Skyrim. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Um, it looks like my bot. You wanted to share the link to to that, and my bot didn't like it, so sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> down, bot, down. Behave. <laughs> if you want to, um, if you want to post a link, but where it says dot or at, just write D-O-T or A-T, that works. Because I've been there on other streams. Or, is there some way that I could, well, I don't know the settings for it, to allow you to do that. Japanese breed. Oh, okay. Oh, big tough, big tough dog. Mmm. But small, okay. Genetically closest to wolves, but small. That's intriguing. Barbus. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Barbus. Barbus! Yeah, we, we kind of. Yeah, Clavicus file. We kind of. We kind of had a falling out, a misunderstanding. I love that quest. It's hilarious. Whoever they got to do that voice acting is brilliant. It makes me laugh. That's a great quest. Oh, medium sized, yeah? Okay. Oh, cleared. Okay, I expected a fight here, but it looks like they're not at home. Oh, you know why? Because I, I, I killed them. I killed them in my. Six level up, run up to the stream. All right, I have to focus on what I'm doing here. Okay, we're going. Okay, we're not going to. We're going to Bleak Falls Barrow, which is this way. Yep. Oh my gosh, how did I forget that? Thank you for reminding me. Goodness. You're like my mom, dude. Put on your coat. <laughs> Three, and a half coat. Three and a half Coke cans tall. Is that how you measure in Coke cans? I like that. I should do that. That makes a lot of sense. Everybody knows how big a Coke can is. No, no. Don't worry about backseating. You're not backseating. What you're doing is not backseating. Perfectly within the, within the reasonable bounds of joining in. <laughs> International measurement. <laughs> like the economic measurement of like what a McDonald's hamburger costs. <laughs> Coke can. If you'd said 40 ounce, I would have understood too. <laughs> you can you can do you know I I am American but you can do meters and centimeters 
I've been in Korea long enough to, I think in Celsius and centimeters and meters. And <laughs> Which is what he would say to someone who's running away from a fight. Come on. Come on. Yeah. This I can save. I just want to stay out of the range of these archers. You guys totally suck. I thought you were behind a different pillar. Uncanny dodge. Uncanny dodge. Wait, you can't find me. Yeah, did you see that? I, th I totally thought he was behind the pillar in front of me. Oh, he's playing the waiting game too. Okay, well, hey, guess what? He didn't see that coming. And, ah, denied. I want your arrow. Good. That is how you defeat the archer sniper. And you pick up their arrows. So you can fashion them into iron ingots later. I know there's a lot, lot. Yeah, when the arrow bears its, yeah. You can only imagine how they might have recorded that sound effect. You see Foley artists kind of in movies using slabs of meat to record bullets, you know. Yeah, the slow-mo. Yeah, kill cams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember before kill cams, there was this short interim when they first released? And before, uh, they released the game, and then after a little while, they, yeah, yeah, they, um, they introduced the kill cam thing. And then they introduced, they rolled out the features, feature creep, right? Um, when they did, ah, oh, totally lost my train of thought. So the kill cams came after release, as did dual wielding. Yeah. Don't you love it when it follows through the the arrow through the air, but it misses? Oh, that's a good hit. Okay, I'm using the wrong. Come on. Mace against mace. Okay. I'll rip your heart out. Mm -hmm. I see your shadow. I see your shadow. Come on. Yeah. You're as good as dead. Yeah. 
Uncanny dodge. Ooh. You don't know where I am, do you? I'm not up there. Oi! Death awaits you. With big, long, pointy, sharp teeth. Yeah, I love that. I love that perk. Yeah, we hate it when NPCs can do it, but when we do it, it's awesome. What were they doing? Okay, I guess they cleared out these skeevers when they moved in. Right? This might be a pretty cool place to sleep if I need to. See, okay. See, I turned down the the opacity of the HUD just for immersion, right? Because immersion's in. say just you mean now should we be watching her oh is there a way that I can stop bots from you guys posting links if I make you guys mod moderators I guess not now okay oh not now she's not doing this now okay Okay, this is all right. Don't do that; it protects you from spammers. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I agree. But it doesn't. I don't want to be protected from you guys. You're my buds now. No, I do not. I do not have a spammer problem at the moment. I just simply do not have the viewership. Yeah. Not having a ton of followers and viewers. Oh, thanks Thanks for following if you did. I don't have anything that lets me know. On, on. I can see that my number of followers has gone up, so thank you. But I don't have any, you know, Indicators that pop up. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Eric McAwful. Eric McNot so awful. Eric McActually pretty cool. <laughs> I do. I do use OBS. Tried OBS Streams Lab slobs. It's called that, but I just went back to the regular old OBS, which I originally just used for grabbing video off of my computer and also um, audio. It was a really easy way to grab audio off of YouTube videos, whatever, because I've been doing that. It's 
it's under docks. Okay, I will look into that. I, I just, I haven't had enough people to necessitate such a move. But now, maybe. Now that I'm, now that I'm streaming things like Skyrim, instead of boring hours of music composition, I might have a few more people, which I appreciate. Take the linen wraps. You need them. You need them earlier. Yeah, I grabbed one. Yeah. Oh, maybe you said never mind because I grabbed it. Yeah, I remember that. What did I need it for? Okay, because I was I was gonna make. Okay, I remember. Let's do it right now. Why not? I remembered it. Can I do it, or do I need another one? I was gonna make. Yes, that's right. I have two now. Okay, great. Thank you for reminding me. There we go. Now I don't need them. Unless I want to make more torches, which I do. Linen wrap. Linen wrap. But I'm going to need some firewood too, right? I'm good. I'll just hold on to those and make torches out of them later. Okay, I'm, I'm reading. Oh, I appreciate that. Thanks, Eric. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not noisy by nature. <laughs> Maybe a lot of people are hyperactive and noisy. I, I think obviously they must think they benefit from it and they probably do some like it some don't maybe we just like a little bit of quiet oh yeah yeah we, we think of and <laughs> this is not going to surprise you probably but um, the music that I compose is is very understated and very quiet and very calm and long and it doesn't demand your attention it's it's like old school ambient music like Brian Eno style ambient music so yeah not very surprised yeah. my music is very expansive and mellow and you can forget about it and just go about your day and so <laughs> yeah it's not it's not like philip glass very much i don't do a lot of repetitious stuff it's not minimalism in that way but it's <laughs> but i appreciate yeah that you know who philip glass is uh i love philip glass but um not that the kind of repetitious percussive stuff um, it's very expansive and I, I, I try to avoid repetition in the music but yeah if you want to since you've followed it and I see both of you have followed now thank you um, if you so dare uh, catch me on a, one of my <laughs> okay <laughs> all right if you want to catch him uh, catch one of my other streams it's it's a not much talking and a lot of just over and over again fixing little things in the ambient music and it's mostly aimed at other composer friends that I've made on Twitch who do the same kind of thing and they seem to like it um, but I'm mostly doing it oh that was really stupid because I know what I'm doing in this room but I'm talking to you guys and I'm gonna focus um so it's, yeah, yeah, to completely derail myself because of the poison darts. So it's um, snake, snake, fish. Snake. Snake, fish. Yeah, so I don't shoot myself again. Yay, okay. Anyway, um, to the music, yeah. It's very expansive, kind of very slow, 
music that you can uh, ignore if you want. So, thief. Mm, I won't. Skeevers. Um, on those, if if you do check it out. Um, If you do check it out, I will not. I will not um, be bothered if you never chat. Um, if you do, I will. I will respond. But I'm when I'm composing. It's it's very much me just composing and um, getting involved in that. So um, don't. I hope you're not. I hope you don't feel like I'm ignoring you if I'm working on a piece and not responding to the chat um, as much as I am now. So, I hope you understand that. I'm kind of new to the whole Twitch thing too anyway, so I, I'm not really in it to gather a huge following. I'm just doing it because I like the idea of doing something with an potential audience okay yeah right exactly you've seen you've seen what happens in Skyrim when I when I lose my focus I, I die <laughs> right do stupid things like get shot with uh, and walk into spider webs get it away from me. Get it away. hey It's bow time. I should just let this. I should let the spider kill him. Because we know, we know what he's got in mind, right? gonna get that book off of you one way or another. How did he shoot off the side of his mouth like that? Did you see that? Just went to the iron, to the stone arrows, didn't it? Yeah, we don't need those. We have got iron arrows. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, when you when you play when you play Skyrim by yourself all the time, you're not always thinking of the most efficient, fast, clean, you know, smart way of doing everything. You just play. You're just playing the game. to you soon later, you traitor. But that's that's kind of unfair knowledge, right? Yeah, exactly. And everything doesn't need to be perfect. You don't have arachnophobia. Yeah. Yeah, that's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, I, I used to be kind of arachnophobic, but I got over it eventually. It wasn't easy, but I, I just, just, it was the only phobia I had. I won't, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but, um, yeah, it started when I was a kid, but I got over it. I can, I can handle a spider being in the room now that I can't reach. Um, but yeah, that's, they're pretty terrifying creatures and, and in fantasy games, they're always portrayed, I guess since J.R.R. Tolkien, right? Since The Hobbit. The Hobbit, right? 
Yeah, the Hobbit has the the big scary spider bit, right? Yep. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. Okay, you got the name. Mm mm. Yep. Not a pleasant way to go. Get me out of here. You over here. Arvel the Swift. You did it. You killed him. I don't know why I was calling him Silas. You know, I think there was a there's another character that this actor voices called Silas or something. Yeah. But this guy is Arvel the Swift. Yes, Not the so swift I know as we works. know. The claw, the markings, the door in the hall of stories. I know how they all fit together. Help me down and I'll show you. You won't believe the power the Nords have hidden there. I know it. Okay. All fine. Sweet breath of arcade. Thank you. All right. Right, it, it just doesn't make sense, their anatomy, yeah. And the same thing with uh, giant ants too, right? Everybody talks about how they can lift this enormous amount of times greater than their own body weight, but if they had to deal with gravity on a, on a larger scale, that would not be the case. Yeah, that's a good point. So let's cut this questionable. It's coming down. loose. I can feel it. Yeah. You fool. You Why fool. Why should I share the treasure with anyone? Oh well, I can give you one good reason. Hmm. Oh, my character wouldn't take. Okay. Okay. Share him the mace. Yeah. I've got better plans for him. They would be slugs. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Gravity. Yeah, my character has something against soul trapping, so I just reflexively grabbed a soul gem, and my character just would not do that. I'm dropping it right away. Because of the RP. See how long you last. Oh, he's got a battle axe. Knows better. Look at that. No, no, he doesn't. That's three kill. Three dudes. Okay. Now, and later, I'm going to learn how to waste these guys in much more efficient ways. Arvel, there's your claw. You, you, you made a journal. See, that's it. The bad guys, they always tell you what their plan is. <laughs> if not while they're alive, in their notes. My fingers are trembling. The claw. Fool Lucan. Valerius had no idea. Oh, okay. So you stole it. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like the claw is going back to the fool, and he's going to comment about how small it looks. Well, that's a... That's a... That's a... That sounds like a... A, a cognitive bias or something. Like, when you... When you're missing something, you end up blowing it up in your head or something, right? When you, 
you lose something, it becomes greater than it was when you actually had it. Maybe that's the cognitive bias that he's experiencing when he gets the claw back and goes, oh, it's smaller, smaller than I remember it. That's because you missed it. I didn't shave anything off of that. Just trying not to step on that thing so it doesn't kill me. Hmm. See, you know that guy. He's not really gone. He's just waiting to kill me. And I haven't sprung him all alive yet. I kill him. Flame Atronach. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you got your things set so that caves look like caves. That's 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 a good idea. Cause caves don't look like this. Candle lights don't shed that that candles don't shed that much light. And like really, where's the, where's the light source here? Hmm? Is there a flame up here? Maybe. Is there something burning up there? No, I haven't. But the EMB. Yeah, I should get an EMB that handles light like that. Like that. Because when you pull out the torch, it really should light up the room. See, it just doesn't really do anything. Not much. Okay. Um, have you done hand mining in Star Citizen Gordon? No, have not. I have not. Is it, is it fun? Good fun. Oh, I have been... I have been lost in some of those caves, though. What happened to my... Shield. I've gotten lost in those caves so so many times that I think I'll just fly around in space for a while. Not that profitable? No. Mm. It sounds like something you... I mean, it's not profitable, right? Because if you're just chipping things out with your hand, it should be more efficient if you have a ship to do it. Like a prospector or what's the other one? I'm not up on all the ship names. The Prospector is the... That's the real good mining ship, right? Drake? Buy Drake. Okay, let's see how good shot you guys are. Not too good. Come on. Yeah, it's nothing like maces against the undead, right? They always tell you in D&D &D that maces do better damage against skeletons because, you know, swords and bones and stuff, but... These are stronger. I think. Okay, to use a mining ship, yeah. Oh, sure. That doesn't make sense, right? Then using, like, a hand pick instead of electri electric pick. But it's cool that we can do it by hand. I knew that would happen. Poorly timed run. Okay, so the Prospector is the one man mining ship. Is there a bigger one?
Is Cal still there? I don't know if Cal plays Star Citizen. Is the bigger one even out yet? Okay. Oh, no, you don't. Okay. Sorry. Oh, okay. Team mining. That makes more sense, right? I mean, I get the, I, I like the idea of the, the lone mining thing. You just don't have the reach you need for that one, Frogger, with a battle axe. Okay, anyway, focus. The Argo Mole, okay, that's it. Good. Well done. Let's try something different here, just because I'm a little bored. I'm going to shoot him in the foot, in the, in the th calf here. Hopefully he won't die. Nope. And then we're going to do this. Yay, fun. I'm sorry, man. That was a good idea, yeah. Should run in, aggro the other ones, and then torch the place. Yeah, that would have been that would have been more glorious. <laughs> uh, we'll have other we'll have other opportunities to do something like that. Yep. That's fun. Oh yeah, the other two. Yeah, the, the the stealth builds they they leave a lot of stuff around that you can kind of set up traps for people and and these tight corridors are perfect for that kind of thing especially with the oil laying around that you can torch it's very cool and if you're a wizard you can torch it with flame flames okay um getting back to the question what kind of what kind of ships do you own by the way yeah i've only spent about 140 bucks on the game star citizen and i my go-to ship is a um freelancer miss the missile boat the gunboat i love that ship i think because maybe it reminds me of serenity in a way you know what i mean you feeling me there like a cross between Serenity and the Millennium Falcon. That's why I like the um, the Freelancer. Oh, the Max, yeah. I like the I like missling people to death. Yeah, a lot of missiles. Oh, okay. I also have a I have an LTI um, arrow, which I'm not great at flying yet, but it's so much fun. <laughs> it's very, but when you're flying around the a freelancer, it's uh, it, it's kind of a big boat, and you don't get a lot of maneuverability. It's a lot of firepower, but um, and then you go. You go into an arrow and you're zipping around and you're very agile and you just kind of run in circles around everyone. Not a whole lot of firepower, but enough. 
So I really would like to get into using the arrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people who are super good at flying the arrow, and they and it made me think that they're probably going to nerf that ship. I don't know if they've done it yet, because I haven't played in a while, but they'll probably nerf the arrow, because it's, if you're, if you know what you're doing in an arrow, you're, you're going to do a lot of damage. And it's just super fun to fly, but I will still always be, you know, for the time being, a freelancer guy. Cutlass Black. Yeah, I've always wanted one. I've always wanted one. It's a super versatile ship. I feel bad for, for Caliburnius because he came on here to to for some Skyrim, and here we are talking about a different game completely. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Cal. Um, but Cal, if... Um, okay, cool. You can roll with it. If it... If it matters, um, the reason we're into Star Citizen, partly, I don't know, I can't speak for, for Eric, but for myself, um, I've always waited, been waiting for a... Thank you. Um waiting for a game that kind of simulates the Star Wars kind of thing or Battlestar Galactica just kind of flying around ships and having your own ship and you know this is my ship you kind of live in this ship and you fly around and you do things and you you know some people are out there to kill you and some people are out there to ally with and it's just kind of it was described early on Star Citizen as kind of a Han Solo game, like if you wanted to imagine yourself as Han Solo, or yeah, okay, you're from. I'm sorry, you're familiar with the game, <laughs> but uh, you might like it. Yeah, play. You, you, it might not be your thing. Totally, I get that, and and I'm not always into it. Don't always play it. And I was in an org for a while, and that kind. Of, got kind of tedious because of didn't like all the people in the orc and it detracted from my enjoyment of the game I'm sure you guys can relate to that okay yeah yeah I, I really hope they go cool yeah yeah mm-hmm This sounds contradictory in a way, but the problem, well, the problem with, uh, that I find with multiplayer games is the people. <laughs> I mean, you go there to play with people, but you realize that you know, it's the people that make it not so much fun. <laughs> but you can't always control it. See him hit the wall. Finish him. I love co-op. Hate MMO. Yep, yep. I'm with you. That's it. That's it. That's the difference. There's a big difference between co-op and MMO. Yep. Completely agree. Yep. Yeah, me too. And I'm looking for that. I'm really looking for that. Just have a couple mates that you trust and who are cool and you fun to hang out with and do your thing and make hours of fun. It's great. Just chatting about stuff. Really? So there's no way to grief in in ESO? How do they do that? I played ESO for a little while, but I didn't have too much experience with 
other players. Maybe that's why. Okay, PvP areas. Okay, that's why. I wouldn't go there. Just now, PvP. Yeah. Because people who are all PvP and... They might be into story, but if they're really focused on PvP, they're gonna be they're gonna be better than you. Of course. They're gonna They're gonna lay waste to your life. Yeah, it's that salt thing. I mean isn't the world full of people screaming at each other and shouting each other down. I mean, do we have do we really need that in games that the thing that we go to to enjoy to, to relax and and enjoy? Do we need that in that too? No. Okay. So you use Discord in ESO. Yeah. The last thing you want is some idiot shouting at you. I used to play CSGO, and I, I, I played just against bots, just single player against bots for years. But I, so I thought, oh, I'll try this. Some of my friends would do, you know, CSGO counter. Uh, yeah, and, and just immediately... 10 year olds shouting at me that I suck, you know, <laughs> and I do, and you know, I get it, but I didn't come, this is not my idea of fun. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I sometimes go back to, to CSGO and, and play bots just because it's, it's fun. And if you set the level high enough, you can get your butt handed to you if you're not being careful and I'm often often not careful enough yep let's see if I can get through here hey, hey. no slicey dicey Why? oh That was a very satisfying thunk. Did you hear that? Goodbye, Cranium. It is almost midnight here, guys. I had no idea the time. I should probably get moving. I'll just waste these things here. He's got the high ground. Anakin, I have the high ground. No. I hate you. I take bone meal. I don't know why. I don't need it. Okay. Um, I think pop goes the cranium. Yep. That's the sound. I should probably. Hey, I appreciate you guys joining me for all this time. Um, gosh, you know, I, I asked, I asked you earlier if you guys stream, so I can check you guys out. Oh yeah, thanks. This is great. I imagined a uh, hundred and fifty ways that. This could be awful, but you guys completely turned those expectations around on me. I appreciate it. This is fun. Charmed 
Charmed Baryon. Okay, that's one word then, is it? Or is it two? It's one word, right? No, I got it written down right here. It's one word? Yes, good, good. I will do it. Thank you, kind sirs. Uh, I don't. I don't have a. This is the only screen I've got, so I think I'm gonna just say goodnight here. Also, Carl Milo. I'm writing that down too. Good stuff. See, this is how we network each other. Yeah. Yeah. Got him. Good. We need mellow streamers. <laughs> All right. Thanks, fellas. Good to hang out with you. We'll we'll catch you next time. Yeah. If next time, if you see a a, a daw of music going, and I'm not saying anything, don't don't think I've. I've been ad abducted by aliens just doing the other thing. So when I come on doing Elder Scrolls Skyrim again, then come on in. Or, you know, anytime. Take care. Bye. Cheers.